Hello, and welcome to 805 Focus, where you get the latest updates on our wonderful local nonprofits. My name is Greg Gorga, your host for today, filling in for the wonderful Cinder Sinclair. My normal job is as Executive Director of the Santa Barbara Maritime Museum. And speaking of museums, we have the wonderful Daisha Harwood with us here today. She is the Executive Director of the Santa Barbara Historical Museum. Welcome, Daisha. Thank you. Thanks for having me, my friend. It's great to have you here. And always a pleasure to see you. We're old friends and, and colleagues. And so uh, give us the update. What's, how, well, let's start at the beginning. So how did the Historical Museum come about? So the museum, or the Historical Society at the time, was formed in the 1930s. And we actually had a few homes around town, including the old mission and the courthouse, believe it or not, until we gained our current home on De La Guerra Street in the early 1960s. And that's a special home because you have some amazing buildings there, right? It is, it is. So that, that location was chosen for a couple of reasons. First, uh, the spot was actually named for Sam Stanwood, who was the Presidente of Old Spanish States for about 20 years and the county supervisor. But most importantly, there are two beautiful adobes on site. The Covarrubias, which is the second oldest um, home in Santa Barbara from 1817, and then our historic adobe, which is roughly 1860s. And they're just beautiful and scenic, and so the museum was perfectly placed there and built to look like a historic adobe, although it is not. <laughs> <laughs> has, it an is. Adobe, has an adobe facade, but it's very beautiful. Yeah, it is. I, actually, mm -hmm. I was just going to say, it's so beautiful. <laughs> and you utilize those adobes as well, right? Absolutely. Well, we use, use them for education um, and offices, and then as a beautiful backdrop for programming and events and all sorts of things. And so 1930s, and your focus is on Santa Barbara history, right? Absolutely. The city of Santa Barbara? Absolutely. So from the Chumash to the modern day, absolutely. And you have amazing exhibits. So if people haven't been there yet, I highly recommend they get there soon because uh, you, you cover so much in your exhibits. We do. We do. Yeah, all sorts of things um, from costume to saddles to um, historical photos. Um, we have a permanent exhibition called The Story of Santa Barbara, um, and also the Edward Boreen Gallery, who is a wonderful Western artist here in Santa Barbara. Um, and we, we host things like, right now we have Clarence Matty, um, who is a wonderful portrait artist, the son of Felix Matty of Matty's Tavern, which recently opened, and so that has been a lot of fun. And a uh, real departure for us was Mountain Drive, the community, uh, which was actually prompted by a wonderful oral history collection that we had digitized. And what it is is the voices of the community of Mountain Drive um, from, from the 1950s and 60s um, that were recorded in the 80s and then digitized along with photos of all the fun that they had at Mountain Drive and still, of course, had. But that was a, lot of, that was a, a very interesting exhibition and is up through the summer. Yeah, I love that exhibit. And what's wonderful about your exhibits is they're not really static. They're, you know, in that Mountain Drive one, you have film, photos. It's just incredible how uh, interactive they are. Thank you. Thank you. That one was fun. We really focused on art, winemaking. Um, and so, anyway, lots of fun. And yeah, we do like to incorporate technology where we can. Mm -hmm. um, you can actually read the old newsletters of Mountain Drive in that exhibition. Um, which was all, you know, all, all really inspired by our, um, our Gledhill Library's collection mm -hmm. of uh, photos, documents, oral history related to Mountain Drive and an interest of Chris Irvin, who's our head archivist. So he worked with uh, Elias Chaco, who wrote the book on Mountain Drive um, mm -hmm. about the Bohemian community. And so that was what prompted that exhibit. Yeah, it's wonderful because a lot of people, I don't, and, and myself, I'd heard of the Mountain Drive people, but I didn't realize they went back to the really the 40s, 50s. Mm -hmm. I thought it was yeah. uh, kind of a 60s era. Mm -hmm. So the other thing about the museum is you're constantly opening new exhibits. So mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about what's coming next. Sure. So um, next up in our, we do two exhibitions at a time, first of all. Next up in our corner gallery exhibition, we'll be hosting Project Fiesta. It's a 99 years of photos, actually, and so we really wanted to pay homage to Old Spanish Days history this year through Project Fiesta. And so it'll be something different for us, just really celebrating our photo collection. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to that, in that space in December, we'll be hosting a costume exhibition, showcasing some of the fabulous party wear that the museum has in our collection of roughly 7,000 um, costumes in our, and clothing in our, in our, um, in our vault. Um, and then in addition to that, we'll be hosting an, um, an exhibition of Edwin Deacon's artwork, 
which will be, which will highlight all of the missions of Alta California. Oh, wonderful! Yeah, and it's lovely because you are right in the middle of Fiesta in downtown. Uh, that you you tend to always do something around Fiesta because it's such a big part of our. our we do. It's history. a big it's a big part of our history, and the museum has a you know wonderful collection related to it artwork, costume, film, photos, etc. We also do a pop-up exhibition during Fiesta. So at De La Guerra Plaza, we actually have a pop-up exhibit that those wandering around having a great time experiencing all the performances can actually get a little bit of history while they're out and about. Yeah. Wow. Two exhibits at a time. I didn't know, I didn't really realize you do that all the time, which I don't know if it's crazy or because <laughs> those are a lot of work, I am sure. So, so tell us a little bit about that. How do you put a collection, uh, an exhibit together? You know, I have a wonderful team and they always have great ideas of not only things that have been given to us over the last many years, um, but also of just stories coming up. So for example, looking into the future, we'll be commemorating the 100 year anniversary of the Santa Barbara earthquake, which happened in 1925. So we tend to take a look at our collection and also what's relevant at the time. So right now, for example, with the Clarence Matty exhibition, we really decided to time that with the opening of Matty's Tavern as it is something that is beloved in our community, but also in a lot, there's a lot of interest right now as well. We also have um, satellite exhibitions. So one at the Hill Creo Adobe, which is about Santa Barbara philanthropists. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also have an aviation exhibition at the old terminal of the Santa Barbara airport. Oh, wonderful. Mm -hmm. And those are nice. permanent satellite exhibitions. Oh, that's yeah. great when you can get outside your four walls, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Our number one goal is to make Santa Barbara history as accessible as possible. And sometimes that's through collaboration, as you know, and mm -hmm. it's something that we really strive to do a lot. Yeah, absolutely. And you have a wonderful party around Fiesta. Uh, you're like the first big party at Fiesta. We do an event called La Fiesta del Museo, um, which is always a really magical evening at the museum and an important fundraiser for us. But wonderful folklorico and flamenco dancers and just like an, an, an opportunity to get dressed up and celebrate the tradition in our beautiful courtyards. Yeah. And so yeah. and support the, the museum. Absolutely, at the yeah. same time, which is really important. Yeah. So you mentioned 7,000 costumes in your collection. Mm -hmm. So I want our guests to know, our viewers, that uh, so the Maritime Museum, I believe our whole, they were a newer museum, but mm -hmm. our whole collection is a little bit over 7,000 pieces. Mm -hmm. So your collection is in the hundreds of thousands. Uh, and, and, and I don't think our viewers realize how much it takes to maintain a collection like that. You're preserving our local history, but you have to have staff to, to take care of those items. You have to preserve them. You have to work on them. You have to catalog them. You have to have the, uh, the equipment to store them properly because you're worrying about humidity, temperature, insects, whatever. Uh, it's, a, it's a big deal. It is, it is a big deal. Um, there's a lot of cleaning and documenting, as you said, and a lot of conservation. It takes a lot of money and experts a lot of the time to, to really put artifacts on exhibitions that have been held in the public trust at the museum, sometimes for over 90 years. And, you know, I mean, that's our number one priority is to, to preserve this history from, you know, the, the most simple photograph to the most elaborate piece of artwork in our collection. Absolutely. So with the, um, for example, the costume collection that you mentioned, that could be anything from hats to shoes to suits to dresses. And, you know, we have a flapper dresses from the 1920s and we have, you know, fabulous um, suits from say the 1960s it's just a, it's a really wonderful snapshot of what mm -hmm. people were wearing and i think when you put clothing on exhibit it really brings to life what those people might have looked like so for example in our permanent exhibition we have um, a mannequin wearing um, anita de la guerra's wedding dress the most probably the most well um well known history um, or well known story in santa barbara history is the de la guerra wedding mm -hmm. and we have that dress on exhibition and our students who visit always comment on how tiny she was, first of all, but it really does bring her, her story to life in this case. So for us, the clothing collection is, of course, very important, but it's all important. Yeah. And one of, the, one of our undertakings recently, just in terms of the storage and preservation of the collection, was actually to add a very large amount of compact storage so that we could not only store safely, but also store more of it um, in our 3,000 square foot facility, which is below the museum. Mm -hmm. um, and the most important element there was adding in um, an HVAC system with dehumidification. And as you know, being that you're at the beach, um, Greg, we have issues with humidity, of mm -hmm. course. Um, 
And so anyway, but very pleased that we've been able to do that and just so thankful to the community for all of the many wonderful treasures that they continue to give to us. Mm -hmm. To preserve that history. Absolutely. And the Daily Guerra Wedding, to be clear, is mm -hmm. the one that's talked about in Dana, uh, Dana's Absolutely. book, Two Years Before the Mass. That is Absolutely. correct. Mm -hmm. And I am not a clothing person. That's okay. But mm -hmm. I have seen those exhibits, and they are amazing. So I enjoy mm -hmm. them, and I'm not even, uh, you know, that's not my forte, but, but they are Thank amazing. You. And it's nice that you continue to rotate because, uh, you know, you, gotta, you continue mm -hmm. to put new things on display. We did. And we love to collaborate. I mean, we did a wonderful saddle exhibition with the Carriage Museum. And, you know, just really showcase kind of the breadth of our collection and the stories of Santa Barbara history through those pieces. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, you also have an amazing library uh, that is, another, is a resource for the community to learn and, and research our local history. Absolutely, so we have a, a library on site. It's a non-lending non research library and um, have had just an incredible um, team in there over the years, Michael Redman, um, ran the library for over 40 years and continues to be our historian. We, had a, we have a head archivist now, Chris Urban, who takes extraordinary care of the collection, but most importantly has been adding so much um, online access to those pieces between oral history and photos and maps and documents. And it's really fun to pop into the library because we have people researching their homes, their family mm -hmm. histories. Um, just all sorts of stories in Santa Barbara. And so it's always interesting to, to learn about what people are looking for. Oh, absolutely. And, and Michael Redman is a treasure. He's you know? a treasure. So I'm one, <laughs> it's wonderful that he's still there. And, and every time I've been in that library, mm -hmm. I've seen you know, Neil Graffy, Aaron mm -hmm. Graffy, Hattie. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's a, mm -hmm. We have, all, a, all we have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful group of historians in Santa Barbara that just adds so much flavor and interest and enthusiasm to the stories that we continue to tell so yeah we're really lucky uh, and and that's the re uh, mm -hmm. a major resource Absolutely. for them so that's so mm -hmm. nice to make that available Absolutely. so so let's talk about right outside that library mm -hmm. is your wonderful courtyard and you do amazing events there uh, for everybody I mean I can't tell you how many people I've talked to have been married there their sons were married there their parents were married there it's a, mm -hmm. a, a wonderful beautiful venue that brings revenue into the museum. It is, I mean, in addition to the to the fun events that we get to host for our members and guests and First Thursdays and collaborative um, you know, performances and things like that, we have this incredible space that we do get to rent out and it provides really necessary income for the museum's operation. But you're right, we host you know, nonprofit events and corporate and a lot of weddings, which is special mm -hmm. because then we have couples that come back and visit and you know, they love it and it's beautiful and it becomes special to them as it is special to us. But we host, we hosted between our own functions and um, rental events, a little less than 80 events last year. So we are very busy and we're very grateful for that revenue as well. So, so just so we put that in perspective because <laughs> that shocked me. Uh, that's one and a half events a week. And you have a very small staff. I mean, you run a bare bones mm -hmm. operation, basically. I do, um, but they're wonderful and dedicated, and um, we've just been able to figure out a way to make it work, and um, you know, be small but mighty. And um, and we're growing as well. You know, we're mm -hmm. continuing to provide more and more access, and it's always fun to share the, you know, share the location with others. We have a lot of destination management companies that come in, and they bring corporate events from out of the area and because it is quintessential Santa Barbara, you know, mm -hmm. under the string lights of our courtyard at night, it's just magical. It really is magical out there. <laughs> it is beautiful. And uh, and you have parking, which is another <laughs> bonus in downtown, <laughs> which is yep. wonderful. So I imagine like most museums, you have, uh, you utilize volunteers. We do. All mm -hmm. right. So how can somebody volunteer for you and what would they be able to do there? So different capacities. We have uh, traditional docents who come in and help us with our guided tours of adults and children. And we have a lot of school groups come through. We have library volunteers. So those who come in and actually help um, with research and cataloging mm -hmm. in our libraries. And then we have a lot of event volunteers. And that's just a fun way to come in and maybe probably like you, Greg, have them help pour wine or greet people or do check-in at an event or something like that. But we have probably 40 active volunteers and they're wonderful and so we are so appreciative for the knowledge and um, and really just enthusiasm that they bring to our operation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we wouldn't mm -hmm. be around without our volunteers. Absolutely. And Absolutely. you have a wonderful store, we do. Uh, which mm -hmm. uh, has local items and, and mm -hmm. highlights that. So how can people support you? 
You know, that's a great question. So I think first and foremost, becoming a member of the museum is a great way to do that. It's, you know, starts at uh, $20 a year for a, a student and $50 for an individual. And that's very helpful to us. It's also a great way to keep connected to the museum and what we're doing, because then as a member, maybe you're gonna hear more about our events and come and support those. Other ways to support, obviously, donations. We always need those for general operations and special projects. Um, and then also, next time you're thinking about you know, a site for an event or a, you need an event location for something, think of the museum because in paying for our location, you are supporting the museum. And all the wonderful things that you do. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we're so lucky because we have a team of just really incredibly dedicated and generous trustees and donors. And then we have a lot of really wonderful clients who come back and back uh, to host events there. And that is so helpful mm -hmm. to us. It also makes it so we can continue to be a free museum. Mm -hmm. So you are free on, on are. a daily basis to the we public, are. which yeah. is really Accessibility nice. is just very important to the museum. And so we've opened our doors and it is always free. And as a member, you do special things for your members, right? Don't you do lectures we, and things we like do. that? We do. Yeah, we do. We, our members get um, discounted prices to our lectures. They get invited to members only events. Um, on, hopefully on first Thursday, they come and have a great time and enjoy the wonderful music and activities that we have. But yes, absolutely. We have events like La Fiesta del Museo and others and a fun holiday party every year that's just for our members. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, they are so wonderful and generous, but it's also a really great way to meet people, as you know, mm -hmm. is to become a member. And then you're meeting people that have similar interests to you and also appreciate, you know, that they're supporting a similar cause. And they appreciate history. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I have, have been to many of those parties because <laughs> they're <laughs> always fun. You always have wonderful food and, and amazing mm -hmm. food, really, and drinks. Thank and, you. And, and, it's, and, and we see some of our other colleagues there as well. Absolutely. Which is really Thank nice. you. Thank you. We have such a great museum community here in Santa Barbara. I'm so thankful to all of our colleagues and you um, for all you wonderful example that you provide, but also just such an aura of collaboration and support. It's just, it's very, Santa Barbara is so special. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit because uh, uh, a lot of people don't realize that the museum directors, and that includes the gardens, mm -hmm. uh, um, the botanic zoo. gardens, mm -hmm. and the zoo, uh, we meet regularly and chat with each other, which is yeah. why we know mm -hmm. each other so well. Uh, and it is wonderful. We re use each other as a resource uh, mm -hmm. for all mm -hmm. sorts of things. Absolutely. And I mean, just recently with the Environmental Alliance, we all did an exhibition or programming related to an environmental cause. And I think just yet another thing that kind of binds us together. It's also just very collaborative in terms of promotion. Um, mm -hmm. I've noticed that, you know, if anyone's having a little bit of trouble filling up an event, we all kind of jump into action and, mm -hmm. and help um, spread the word. And obviously just the joint research and collaboration and all that is so, is so important. But I, I do think it's such a great group. So. And many of us are a part of Museums for All. We are. Uh, mm -hmm. Which doesn't quite mm -hmm. as matter for mm -hmm. you because you're free, but uh, we do discounted admission yeah. and memberships for, for low-income community. Yeah. Absolutely. Which mm -hmm. is really nice. And yeah, we're working on a new collaborative mm -hmm. exhibit, I think, on water, right? In we, in I a, think so, next year. Yeah. A, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, and, and we go visit each other at different museums, mm -hmm. which is really nice. Yeah. Anything else you want to uh, tell our, our audience? Great question. Just just come to the museum. If you haven't been there before, come check us out. We are just two blocks off of State Street in, in the heart of downtown. Uh, when you come down to check out the Presidio, make sure you walk one more block and come inside and see us. And just walk around and enjoy it and say hi to us and say hi to our wonderful team. Um, we're open um, Wednesdays 12, 12 to 5, Thursdays we're open until 7, um, and then Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays 12 to 5. All right, so, so Wednesday yeah. through Sundays and first mm -hmm. Thursday is a wonderful Always way to do Always open first that. Thursday, and we're usually serving wine, and sometimes we have music and fun activities. So, mm -hmm. yeah, come and on I over. forgot how close you are to the Presidio. So we are. Uh, yeah, it's just a great way to you know enjoy downtown, and we hope that in visiting the museum, you will really appreciate more of what you see as you explore Santa Barbara. Exactly, and and you get to walk around that courtyard when you mm -hmm. visit through all the different exhibit areas. Uh, the, the Marine Gallery, mm -hmm. and, and it's all just so wonderful. Thank you. And you can park right there. <laughs> you can. <laughs> <laughs> Which is even more special. It is exciting. <laughs> yeah, so wonderful to be with you Thank today. You. Thank you so much for Thanks being for here. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. <laughs> Good to see you, Greg. And thank you for joining us at 805 Focus, and we hope to see you next time.